Good. I prepared some notes. Nothing special. Um, as usual. So just blog post from Steve. So status 1.10.1, which is not shipped yet, and we'll see why. Uh, status. What has been done last week? Okay, four days ago, everything happened four days ago. Yeah, this, this was funny, I will explain. Uh, fixing dynamic compilation issues. So, yes, status, let's look at GitHub. Issues 1, 10, 1, we should have one. One, this one is uh, after is post uh, release. So um, this one is still not closed. But so the issue here is that uh, the web config uh, was not containing some required or oh, contain extraneous remove tags for assemblies. So this fix is about adding them back. Adding back. Um, we're removing the remove dataset extensions and adding these ones, which apparently are necessary for some modules. Since 1101, which we still can't explain. Um, the issue is that now Antoine says it's fixed for some modules, but not all the modules. So apparently, Could not load file or turn layouts. Because again, one assembly is missing. Do you know which one, Antoine? Uh, no, I don't. Because the, uh, the last errors I have is about uh, Orchard.dynamics, which has a reference on Orchard.layouts. And Some modules as reference to the modules. Uh, which module doesn't compile? Because it worked for me. Orchard.dynamic forms. Okay, I'll try that. I thought we had tried. We'll try again. But only on on my on my server, not uh, locally, on my computer. Okay, and what does Rob say? I had, yep, I had the image hit or issues too. Did you restart IS of the web config? No, I didn't. Oh, do that. Yes. Try that. Okay. <laughs> uh, section, memory footprint. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, for him, it works. So. Okay, I'll try. I'll look out Thank and I'll connect because, because I just plugged the release on that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and while you're here, we'll talk documentation. Okay. Okay. I'll disconnect one minute and I'll reconnect. Okay, see you. <laughs> Uh, so this one should be fixed. Then we worked on the Kudu issue, which is that it was not restoring the NuGet packages for Kudu. Uh, we started by just specifying the the solution to to look for NuGet packages, which should have fixed everything. But then we realized that we realized that where is that this one that this was in a like uh, if false because empty string is always equal to empty string so it can't be not equal so it will not call that so we fixed that again and then it was not working and we um, investigated and it was actually oh you know then we tried you see i created branches branch names here a a a and an ambiguous name because it will still not work with kudu because of the branches we tried on the orchard cms repository so i created weird names so there is no ambiguity if you have so we found the issue about the ambiguity so when we were trying to deploy 1101 um, on kudu on orchard sorry on azure 
app services the deployment um, it will not take 110.1 but actually 110x and not see our changes it's because when it tries to do a checkout 110.1 uh, the, the, the message was ambiguous branch name between 110.1 and whatever actually it was not an ambiguous branch name between branches but between 110.1 the branch and 110.1 the tag because you can also check out the tag so the git client was confused this is why I created two other branches so if you get an ambiguous merge or checkout issue or sometimes when you try to merge like right now if you try to merge 1.10.1 into 1.10x same thing it will complain about ambiguity on the, the tool you need to yeah to be explicit about the branch and not the tag um, so that was the issue and now it works with Kudu I try to deploy and it works perfectly so this is fixed uh, Sergio on 110x sorry Sebastian um, Go. in the deploy.cmd I think we shouldn't uh, wire in orchard.sln just like we changed it in the deploy.cmd I agree I don't disagree but um, you have to specify the solution and there will be an issue if there are multiple solutions and if you don't specify one explicitly I check the, the, um, the documentation for that if there is only one solution that works if there are two solutions it will fail well the default can be orchard.sln it's just that we should be able to um, yep. pass in another parameter to, to override it I yeah I assume you can do that with an environment variable then yeah so if we can do that with an environment variable it should be doable then can you please change the deployment CMD uh, okay I will check I, I um, haven't really tried um, to do deployment in, in a long long time okay it should it should be actually easy where is the change uh, if I look at the file this is a deployment CMD and I'm sure they're using already some environment things so this is SCM trace level but there must be a way to get access to the to the dashboard environment variables Um, yes and you see it's not even so it's calling MS build but it's using it's not passing the solution so same thing as you as we change the solution here we can pass the solution in the in the parameter you made for this one yeah exactly so we need yeah, if someone knows about um, could do deployment script or look into can look into the their documentation to see if we can reuse an environment variable from the from the dashboard, from the Azure dashboard, that would be nice. This way, we can define during your deployment which solution you want to to build, which will contain which modules you want to deploy, and everything. That would be nice. Good. At least create the issue, uh, so we can track it. Okay. Um, fixed problem with case checking request headers in output cache from Sergio. Apparently, casing issue uh, host in uppercase is not always used uh, and this validates the issue I ensure that accessing the index on something which doesn't exist doesn't throw an exception it actually returns null so that's fine so approved um, Ariane who added the support for SAS files in the GUL pipeline uh, nice addition and it's funny because it's actually something I added in Orchard 2 because uh, Bootstrap 4 is based on SAS files uh, it's the same solution so that's good um see good uh, create target folder if that exists when moving media so yeah okay when we move a media we need to ensure that the folder exists so this is an easy fix if the folder doesn't exist create the folder then Ian um, fixed an issue uh, with SSL on output cache so now it's adding the scheme on the output cache the idea being that if um, you don't do that you could get the result of a non HTTPS or an HTTP request from an HTTPS uh, uh, request and vice versa so this fixes it 
and uh, related notes probably we should change the SSL module to only have fun configuration and that's force SSL on all pages and that's it because it's really a bad practice to have um, SSL and non SSL pages side by side yeah we don't do that mm, but there are options for that nope mm, it was removed yep long time ago it used to be there but it was removed because we knew about the issue oh really well, yeah, cool. I think so. <laughs> or if there is an option, we can. I assume we can, maybe it was there for. Uh, I don't know. But or if there is an option, it's not even checked by default, and we make a message saying. But I'm sure we talked about it. We know that it's an issue, and we should not do that. Yeah, that, I'm almost sure. Well, cool then. I haven't seen. Bertrand will confirm, but yeah, I, I made the module. Um, let's let's check, but uh, but yeah, um, at least by default, if there was an option by default, all the pages are HTTPS once you're on HTTPS, and this this we are sure. But it's not because all the pages are in HTTPS that you are not allowed to query the HTTP one. Oh, I d oh maybe there is an option to force um, HTTP to HTTPS. Because, yeah, we yeah maybe that's what you are talking about. No, I mean that's good. Uh, it's just that I think that we shouldn't really allow um, any scenarios where you can mix the two. Mix? Yeah, I don't know what you say. What you mean by mixing? Uh, because there was an option, and now I'm checking, and I, I think it's still I, that, there. Okay. Yeah. There was an old option which was once you're authenticated in HTTPS, go back to HTTP. There was this option, which is bad, and we removed this one for sure. So once you're authenticated, we force you to go, well, first we can force you to go to HTTPS. There is an option for that. And then you remain in HTTPS. And I think there is another option, which is only allow HTTPS traffic. Yes, I'm just talking about the configuration which uh, bears the name enable SSL on specific pages where you can specify URLs yeah. and just yeah. force SSL on those. No, 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 no. It, no. It's, it's, it doesn't just force SSL on those. It will force you to redirect to HTTPS when you go on these pages and you remain after that on HTTPS. It's just what triggers to, to go on HTTPS. Mm, then the UI hints are wrong. Okay. This is not what's written here. All right. Anyway, I will check the check the feature. Yes, we should not go from HTTPS to HTTP. Yeah, I agree. Um, update localization services to invest only dash is for enable team. So from George, it's just uh, yeah browsing localization only if if the theme is enabled. Uh, this one is the fix to kudu, um, and I assume I deleted the branches online at least. Um, yes. Oh, master is locked. It's new. What did we do with that? Dev is locked. What is that? Is that a new feature? It stops you from force pushing. It's not locked. It just stops you from force pushing. Oh, you can't force push Dev and master. Okay. Yeah. It's new thing. You did that? Uh, no, I think we all did it quite some time ago on a call. Okay, I never saw that. It's good. I, I, I could assume that maybe we could protect branches based on user rights, like, I don't know, some committers can push to dev and master, and some others can push to any user branch. Uh, that it's not about source. pushing, it's, uh, it's about yeah. force pushing. But this is something that I would like. So we could accept more contributors to have access to the main repository if they don't touch dev and master. So you see there are gatekeepers. Only some people can merge dev and master, you see? But we can, uh, yeah. Um, okay. 10 digit precision to support SAS. He explained in the issue which is tracked that um, uh, yeah, when it's doing calculations, the default is not um, detailed enough and you can lose precision when you render some CSS variables. Mm -hmm. 
so this is what should be done okay uh, then I merged uh, one ten x so uh, one ten one merged to one ten x and one ten x merged to dev uh, I th I paid attention to not do merge issues like remove features but there were merge conflicts so if you see anything please let me know or fix it um, and that's okay so just waiting for Antoine to confirm that there is no bug on the 1.10.1 release. Uh, feel free to test it also. Antoine? Okay, I confirm. I just tested and uh, it, it works. works. Yeah. Good, thank you. So we are ready with 1.10.1. I already updated um, the binaries on um, GitHub. Um, so I will ship it because this was the last issue and Antoine confirmed it works. So that's good. Uh, we have two testers who confirmed it worked uh, and I also checked on Kudu it was working also fine so that's good um, okay question comments on the status I used the AAAAA branch because when I wanted to deploy in Kudu it didn't show the unambiguous name branch because the U we have more than 30 branches and and the portal doesn't show up more than 30 because it's calling github apis which limits to 30 branches so i had to create a branch with a, uh, uh, a name to appear at the top of the list to be able to deploy that um good then uh, no questions that's beautiful uh, one ten one on its way a uh, status uh, just some status on orchard 2 what happened last week? What happened last week? Um, so we demoed last Tuesday. We demoed um, Orchard 2 on Linux on the Stand Up Live ASP.NET committee meeting. Um, what else? I know that Jasmine wor and Jean Thierry worked a lot on that. What have they done? SQLite has gone back in. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Because yeah, I I, I like to challenge Jasmine. <laughs> so he made the uh, Orchard work on Linux, and I and but it still needed SQL Server on the host system. So I I asked Jasmine, okay, next time, next step is to work on SQLite, and he did that. But first, before doing it in Orchard 2, it needs to work in Yes SQL. So he worked on Yes SQL to add the SQLite support and he had it work and pass all unit test. There were some issues and I thought it was a very hard issue and he, f he found the issue and it passes all the unit tests so that's good. I have a PR for that now. Uh, he's getting some help from uh, Alex Posharov for the um, project files, project zone files. So we have SQL to working with SQLite apparently. As soon as I have merged the pull request it should work out of the box with Orchard 2. Um, and we should also try it on Linux. Uh, I was able to to create a test project on Linux with SQLite, so I know how to fix that. Uh, there, there is a, a trick for Linux on SQLite. Um, I will share it on the README if necessary. Um, so, so that's it. And Jean Thierry worked on uh, dynamic module loading. So before last week, we had to reference all the modules from the main uh, web project because dynamic assembly module was broken somehow so to unblock myself I referenced everything uh, but Jean Thierry made it work again um, and that's cool and he also found an issue in uh, SPLET MVC that has been triaged on this MVC side and will be fixed in MVC uh, but that's good uh, because we can inject any of the custom services we need. Um, Jean Thierry was able to copy paste the current implementation, fix it, and register a fixed implementation of MVC um, Roslyn compiler for the views. Uh, bye, Benedek. Bye, Benedek. Why do you say bye? Oh, Rob. Rob. Yeah. I hope it's not Orchard. I, I think it's Orchard. What, what? It's probably related to Orchard, but it might not be because of fortune. Oh, yeah, it might so. be like a server might be down or I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, the update on Orchard 2. Jean-Thierry and Jasmine worked on that. I could not work on that because I was uh, um, 
working on MVC, testing all the scenarios that we can imagine with MVC to be sure that the next release is is uh, as perfect as we can as it can be. Um, and yeah, and uh, what is was fun is that we find a bunch of issues because of Orchard. Orchard is uh, was triggered for many a trigger for many uh, issues in MVC and ASP.NET. It was it was fun. They like it. It's good. We find we can fix bugs before the customers find them because of that. So that's good. Um, that's about Orchard two. Uh, next step, uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, I expect a SQLite to work in Orchard two, and um, so dynamic. Yep. Go ahead. Sebastian, did you say that um, SQLite is dependent on you put, um, merging a pull request on the S SQL? Yes. Because I already merged the Orchard two SQLite stuff, so how is that possible? Huh? That's no, that was SQL, that oh, was SQLite. I'm sure there is some SQLite uh, changes necessary in Orchard two, but it won't work until the SQL is itself fixed. Because so the, in Orchard two, what is necessary is um, to define the provider. So that when we type SQLite as a provider name in the setup screen, it knows which one to create. So it knows how to configure SQL to use which provider connection. Right, okay. So I'm sure that this is the part that you merge, but uh, yeah. still, yes, SQL won't work until we, I merge the fix. But I want to try it locally first to be sure that the, the thing works. Is, is there a plan to port to Azure Document DB? No. There is a plan not to merge, to not to migrate to Azure Document DB. Never, ever. For so many reasons. <laughs> so for many reasons, actually. So what do you say, uh, Nick? Well, it doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, so first, uh, I think we already decided to use SQL Server. Sorry, oh. to use SQL. An RDBMS and not okay. uh, document DB, okay. uh, because because um, because SQL works actually, and uh, and we need transactions and um, and companies. We are sure. So by by choosing a NoSQL database, we will prevent, I'm sure, many scenarios to work from working. And by using SQL, we don't prevent anything. We have embedded databases like SQLite, so you don't need a server to be set up. It works everywhere. You have many options. You know, you have people who know SQL in every company. You have tooling. You know how to do backups and yeah. so it's so ubiquitous everywhere that I, there was no main reason but, uh, but hype to choose a, a NoSQL database. But still, we have YesSQL because we are doing a document DB API. And so we are storing documents, but it's just stored in the SQL database. And uh, and it's fast also. We have no issues with SQL. So I, I think that's good. Nick, you agree? Yeah, I like it. It's good. I, I, would, sti I, I would stick with SQL. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It's not, it sounds it sounds like and especially this the improvements that have been made um, for scaling, it seems like it's a, it's an and, and look at SQL Server now it has a in memory database too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's great. Um, but that's not just the way I mean the way we structured it was we split the querying and the um, and the storage. Oh yes. Better. And yeah, yeah, and that's also allows you to store your documents in the blob storage if you want, or on the file system, yeah. or in memory. We use SQL just for the querying. So you can so. you can change your storage provider to whatever you want. You could store it in NoSQL if you wanted to, but um, yeah, J but just the documents, not the querying. Yeah, yeah. You still need SQL. So you could have a SQLite database local just for indexing the documents, and use MongoDB if you want to store your documents. There, I don't see why you would do that, but why not? Can, can we do multiple content stores at the moment, Sebastian? So could we have Mongo and Raven, for example? There is no implementation for that, but you're not limited by that because you can try your own implementation of a content yeah, store yeah. that will yeah. hub, that will yeah deep replicate to two different other ones. Yeah, I thought so. We, I, rem I thought that's what we did. Okay, cool. Current, currently, we have a memory one, which yeah. will wrap any content storage into memory also. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, okay, cool. 
good um, so then a compilation and 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 uh, continue the features yeah um, what else what is, oh documentation so Antoine made some progress on the documentation side you want to show us yes uh, I can show you, I will just maybe pass the link. Okay. And so I managed to fix, yes, the last bug that we had, like the, the version <laughs> the, the <laughs> left. Yes. You, you are having fun, I see. Mm, yes, with the, the color. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. Uh, all the bugs have been... Oh. Mm, oh, yes. Oh, there is... No, oh, there, 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 there are some bugs. Yes, no. Yes, look at that. The navigation is. Uh, it sh shouldn't be fixed with its own drop because it has its own scroll bar. But you saw the page became yes. further and. Ah! But I see all the fixes you made because on Thursday there were many issues. Like, let's see yes. if this one the is fixed also. Is now. Beautiful. Wow! It's responsive, so the edit and GitHub link works. Uh, will work when we will uh, publish on uh, the latest branch because it is not dynamic. Uh, Beautiful. I don't like the green. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it, that's why I say he played because it was blue last week. Now it's green, like the current website. But once we have a new website, you put it whatever color we have in the new website. I'm sure. Yes. I assume me try to. Yeah, no, it's it's nice. I don't, guys. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah, I really like it. I just don't like green. It's <laughs> it's fast. We have the navigation working properly. We can see the full talk and it's expanding when we click on that. It's nice. Yeah, there is a bug. Definitely a bug here. It should take the full size. Yes. Like last last week, this element was on the right and on the left. It has to be on the left, like mm -hmm. on. And now it's fixed, so that's beautiful. Did you do it by yourself? Yes, almost, yes. Good. Yeah, that's great. And for those who didn't see that, when you click on it on GitHub, it doesn't work. You it used to work. It's master by mkdocs. And uh, when, when it will be uh, on the latest branch, it will, it will work. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to show is that when you go and edit on GitHub, all the files appear in the preview and in the edit mode. So we don't have to guess how it will how it will it will look like. Open the, the link and just replace master by mkdocs. Okay, this is a page you go to edit. You see there is oh it doesn't work anymore. No. Why? Because of the ah, it was working. Maybe this page specifically. Be the source. No, because I don't want to fix it. I don't. <laughs> I just want to see to see if it's every everything or. Uh, it must be. Relative link. No, it's about maybe this. Yeah, I don't know. This page actually didn't work, so we need to check this page. But the other ones work. You see, you have a good preview. It's very nice. I like it. Beautiful. Okay, so we are ready. Let's merge. We will merge when we will um, configure the DNS. Oh yes, I didn't get the answer. I s I sent the email. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Uh, because if we merge, uh, you know uh, the, uh, the the actual one will try to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he will fail. That's fine. I, I can I can stop the the old one and yes. and merge it. Uh, Bertrand, do you need to do a fork before? Uh, because you might not want to lose it. I the legacy branch. Oh, <laughs> okay. Just not to f to lose the the app itself. Um, okay. It, it should be in the source history, right? Yes, but so. might be lost in the source history. Yeah, just 
create a branch before you you do, and uh, uh, you can end a branch, right? You can prevent yeah. it from being. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, good. Okay, so waiting for the DNS to be set up or instructions to set up the DNS. I'm still waiting. I will ping him again. Um, Okay, good. Questions on the documentation? I don't think so. Um, so these two blog posts from uh, Steve Taylor, he's got, for those who don't know, he's making a series of, um, of posts about resigning the, the, the main website. Um, yep, you see objective and audience, uh, CMS website audit, CMS vendor site. So this one, last week, when we publish it, uh, 666, six, six. also we didn't talk about this one, comparing CMS vendor websites. So it's comparing the website from uh, um, so Umbra Code, RuPaul, WordPress, and Ghost. Um, it's interesting, it's a nice read, I like it. Um, um, pros and cons for each website, like you see here, you see nice brands, so it's more con you're more confident when you go on the Umbra website because you see big brands using it. Um, we also have brands uh, using Orchard, so we can use them. Um, dislike CTA, what is CTA? Call to action, call to actions, yeah. Very, like a CTA here is uh, contact sales. Or next, so and he compares it to, for instance, uh, this one download with on WordPress. Okay, so what what do I want to do on the website when I first arrive on the on the page? Uh, so Drupal, I think he liked the, the dashboard, the showcase here. Uh, nice showcase again. White House, Tesla, good things. Um, WordPress, Ghost, it's hard to see this is a web page, it's all white and black here. Um, yep, conclusion. Conclusion, I've only highlighted a few sites I visited, but overall there are no real big surprises here, but there are some interesting points that demand more investigation discussion. Uh, but over the last uh, over the last few years or so, we have seen sites that use the home page to sell the product to the user. Example: <coughs> Basecamp, Invision, Basecamp. This one is weird. Um, and, 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 I'm keen to explore this area for the Orchard site and see if it fits with the requirements and the user journeys. User journeys, which is tackling here, is trying to really identify a set of personas, typical users who will go on the website and will be interested so we can drive them to, to what they are looking for on the website. And I tweeted that, uh, so there is a creator which is a creator of a project, researcher which is there to look for information, and user um, will use Orchard to create content, and they all have glasses. So if you want to use Orchard, you need glasses, right? That's what I, I realized. Um, he, didn't I get, he, he didn't get the job. Yeah, so fair for you. <laughs> How is, how is Benedict if you, with that? If you don't use Orchard, then you need glasses. <laughs> those people have those glasses. Yeah, um, yeah so three different um, personas. Um, and next one, is already published? Oh yes, I didn't link to that. A project requirement, oh no, it was there. Project requirements for the new Orchard website. Um, creator requirement. Uh, creator, I want to be able to quickly and easily download the right Orchard package for me so I can evaluate it. Okay, I want to be able to quickly and easily find out how to install and set up Orchard. Okay, uh, to learn more about developing with Orchard. Okay, so documentation. I want to be able to learn how I can contribute to Orchard. 
OK. End user requirements. Oh, maybe I need one more based on a comment, administrator. OK. End user requirements. I want to be able to quickly and easily try Orchard. Try Orchard. We know how to try Orchard, right, Sultan? So I can evaluate it. As an end user, I want to be able to learn how to use Orchard. OK. Research requirements. Understand what features Orchard offers. Yes, this is yeah typical. What does it do? What does it not do? Um, well supported and fully featured CMS. So I assume the references are, are uh, a plus here. Um, assess the benefits of Orchard and cooperate with other platforms. Uh, okay, administrator. Edit and delete pages so I can keep the website up to date. Oh, that's for, okay. Administrator, as in the owners of the website. Okay, like uh, committee, steering committee. Okay. Quickly and easily add edit and delete pages. Uh, add community videos and articles so it doesn't take too long to keep website resources up to date. Yes, probably with a dynamic form and a workflow so we get. Uh, main notification and we just say okay approved and it's there that's really nice um, okay good I like it it's good it's nice and it's uh, it's written somewhere so we can ref refer to that and uh, people can help on that also and the comments that's uh, that's that's I like nice it's short and straight to the point as well just it's, yeah. it's an easy read yeah it's, yeah it's nice yeah normally requirements documents are a bit of a, a bit of a troll <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like to see, I'd like to see the, the, the website now. Where is the website? Yes, okay, see, great. I, the website? <laughs> it's like every time he tweets about it, I'm like, where is the website? Um, maybe next week we'll see. Um, yeah, it should try .net. Maybe he doesn't know about tryout.orchard.net and we'll remind him. Maybe we should comment on that. Or we'll let Zoltan comment on try.orchard.net. What is that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shall I move the point between try and or orchard? What was? Yep, still works. Let's see if it works. Maybe it's broken. It should still work. Yeah, yeah I remember the demo you made about that. Next. Next. Yeah. Yep, but it's ugly. Oh, maybe too many people have tried it. Yeah, you, you should re, you should reset the database maybe or do something here. It, oh, it's it expected. Early, it's just the the original creation days of this. Oh, it's ugly. <laughs> well, it is. We need a better base team for our children. Oh, sure. But still, it's it's ugly. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, good. Good, good, good. I can close that. Um, what else? Uh, topics? Discussions? Questions? Oh, yes. There's a topic. I didn't put it in there. But I don't think we should care much. So, the topic of the week. Tom, 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 tom. Uh, and actually, I thought about something. I thought about something. It's it's very bad, but um, Colanta. Um, um, I need. To, why is it la sentence est irrévocable? <laughs> for, for those French people, if you are not French, you you don't know. <laughs> but we say sur survivor in French. See, it's survivor in French, okay. See, so <laughs> this is the council meeting <laughs> to vote for evicting someone from, <laughs> and and in the end, and in the end, where is that? So apparently, it's this guy we get. Where is that? Where is that? I can't find it already. <laughs> Sorry, well, that's uh, it's 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 sad. It's sad I can't find it. Well, we we'll let Antoine give us a link to the exact uh, location. Antoine is very good at giving us links. Good. 
Um, so, yeah, for those who didn't follow it, um, there is a user on the forum who rage quit uh, by closing all the issues he created. Um, um, which is an issue because those issues were open, so we cared about triage, so we cared about it, but at the same time, he created the issues, so, well, I won't blame him. Um, so, the, I would suggest... You, you won't blame him, seriously? N no, I, I'm not mad at him, I'm like, I'm okay, sad. So, let's imagine sad. That, that, that he had done uh, code contributions, for example, and that he had the technical means to take those contributions with him. Would that be okay? I think it would not be no, okay. That's not the okay, same thing. So you, so you he contributed something, yeah, he cannot right. take it back. So for you, the issue he created is like for the CLA, it's... It's out. It. Okay. But he can close them. Anyone can he's close an issue. Hurting, he's hurting the whole community. Yeah, he can close it for legitimate reasons. Mm -hmm. But he's hurting the whole community by uh, attempting to remove a contribution that he made. Uh, if he made the contribution, once he's made it, it's, it's, uh, it belongs to the community, not him. Well, yeah, it, it's the, the, good, the good thing here is that the content is still there. It's not deleted because yeah, it could it have been deleted. It's just yeah, closed. So it's just we, are not, we are not the first to have this kind of problem. So mm, the the plan of action I would suggest will just be to create new issues based on the ones that he closed, and that we can we either create new issues or well, we can reopen his he issues close, yeah. and ban him. I'm not ready for banning people. I'm not yeah, either, I'm but I would ban him from the code base. He, he can't change anything in the code base. He doesn't have rights. He can create PRs. He can do whatever he wants. But yeah. I I ban him from GitHub. No, I don't think we need to go there. It was okay. He so didn't harm. He didn't. He didn't do any harm per se. He didn't. We didn't lose anything. It's we could just have So how him. about how about a strike? Uh, we we reopen those issues. Well, the ones we we think should be reopened. Can you reopen the issues uh, by someone else though? I don't think what? you can. I, I tried to reopen one and you. I don't. I couldn't. Oh, we can. Oh, we yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can. Uh, so yeah, we reopen uh, what we think needs to be reopened. There is there is no reason why we would uh, we would have to do extra work because of him, right? Reopening those issues and there's a lot of them is going to be a pain in the butt. So let's just reopen them. And if he thinks that uh that he that it's okay to reclose them then we ban him i think that's quite fair so we should do something to keep these issues that are actually legitimate and sure banning is is an extreme measure but uh yeah, we've all interacted with him. There is there is no interaction with him that ever ended in a good way. I challenge anyone to find any thread or any bug that he was on that didn't uh, have insults flying or accusations or aggressive behavior. Yeah. In a comment, it's never happened. Respects me. What? Uh, there was a comment in which he said that he respects me. You see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably after after uh, insulting the rest of the people on the thread. It was a, it was a code review um, comment thread. But, uh, yeah, just mentioning. <laughs> and we've tried everything. We've tried to be nice. It doesn't work. I'll be back. He quit or Orchard last yeah. year already. Yeah, he's he's done it several times, and uh, it's just exhausting. He's, he's just. I try to. It's not it worth the trouble. I I just ignore the the, the conversations when I see them. I'm like, what's the point? Don't have time for that. Um, yep. Okay. 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 Um, well, I would 
Well, we, we will vote, uh, vote, 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 but Sikwe is not here, which is sad, uh, who is also missing from the committee, Piotr. Um, wh what who do we have here? Uh, myself. Who is missing? Sipke. I think. Um, I will definitely not vote for a ban if we don't have those two guys and the dictator. The dictator has no more power than ban and just making, breaking the balance. Um, so options here is just um, reopening the issues and uh, banning the user. Um, slash creating new ones because we need to deal with that. Once, um, yeah, so I assume we can vote for that. Um, A reopening. Okay, let's do it this way. Okay, so reopening, creating. Um, I don't really care. Bertrand, you want to reopen? Zoltan. <coughs> You do you, you do know what blocking the user on GitHub means, right? What, ex please be specific then, just to be um, sure. It means he can't open or comment on issues or pull requests. He can't fork repositories, and uh, he can't add, add or edit wiki pages. Yeah. Please. So the the one I'm worried about is forking. I think that that's not right. We shouldn't prevent anyone from forking. Yeah, I, it I, can't I, I, fork. So create or fork. Okay, create PRs and fork. Well, he can still pull it and push it to another repo. That's not, he's, he's not banned uh, from taking the source code. That's yeah. What, what what would prevent him from creating a fork himself and uh, pushing that to some? Nothing. Uh, he can still do that. Okay, so he can still do that. So that's fine. Yeah, okay. you can still. Pull, I think you can still pull the code and push the code. You can like that's what they're saying. You just can't push the fork button. You can't, you can't, you can't do a fork on GitHub, but you can. Exactly. No, so yeah. if he's decided to leave by himself, let him leave. And if he's yeah. bothering us again after he said he will leave, then we can. Yes. I will not go. Yeah. So, Zoltan, any opinion about? Also for reopening uh, after a second check, of course, that whether they are indeed issues. So let's do a try triage as well. Okay. Yep, let's reopen them. And reopen. Okay, so that's okay. So let's reopen the issues. Um, we can do it on Thursday, right? And by the way, there is also have uh, at least one pull request, I think. Prob yes, which was waiting for my um, uh, unit test or some help. Yes, there is one at least I know about. Uh, yes. Uh, it's still there. If it's still there when we merge it, I'm fine. We can merge it, right? <laughs> or maybe it doesn't want us. But it, it could remove it if you want. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was the topic of the week. Um, reopen the issues he closed. If there are actual issues, not like this one, which is just Really, so this one typically started the the the, the domino effect um, because Jasmine was trying to help him and he was not happy apparently because because Jasmine closed the issue because there was no issue to repro it was not an issue and so he created this one to say why are you creating closing the issues I created <laughs> yeah so that's clearly pers personal it's yeah a so specific person it's yeah. just nasty uh, and so if he comes back and uh, recloses those issues then we take a new vote that's um, a good question that's a good question does re yeah it's 
and you vote to go to band user. Yes, so if we're open, it's like it's our issues. Please don't close them. We want them. Uh, if he closes them, it's no, no, sorry. Then, then we can it's vote. Very clear, clear in the CLA, but he, I think, should have signed that once he added a contribution, you can't, you can't take it back. So that's that's pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, what did I miss on the chat? Um, did he ever sign the... Uh, yes, uh, and he did. did. Yeah, but for the PRs, I don't know what the CLA says related to the issues. Mm, it yeah, was that that interesting to check. Because we have... Um, he, was, he had a PR and... Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't ask people to, uh, to sign a, no. a CLA for opening bugs, of course. But I can't find it. That's an interesting question. What's the what's the IP status of bug reports? It's still a contribution, and although we don't ask for SCLA for that, if you have signed it, uh, I would uh, say it covers that as well. I can't find a PI anymore. Close it. <laughs> of course, you, you can't. Click on closed. That's what I'm doing right now. That's no? just nasty. It's so petty. No, I can't find it. Try the pool. No, I can't find it. Uh, author. Check this the link into the chat window. I can't find the the, the user anymore either. It's not an author. <coughs> you you mean check the chat? He actually quit GitHub. No, he's still on GitHub. Oh, yeah, okay. I just can't find the. Take, okay, check the chat. Check the chat. Check the chat. No. A bit up. Yeah. This one. Closed. That's why. Okay. Yeah, closed 14 hours ago. Uh, CL is signed. <laughs> He's already fucked it. <laughs> of course he did. Okay. Good luck with that. Okay. Um, done for this matter. Any other topic? Questions? Comments? Go on, anything. Hello, well, we, need to come up, we need to come up with a to-do list for Orchard 2. A what? A to-do list or whatever we need to do to... What do we need to do to get it to... Yes, okay, I was thinking about the roadmap, like we have an... Roadmap, roadmap. that's what I needed, yes. Okay, so, yeah, roadmap on Orchard 2. Because I closed good. the one that I wrote down, because that was yeah. just a sketch. It still looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah good idea of what we need to do, but there are lots of items were yeah. obsolete or not, not, yeah, no more. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So roadmap, like we do for Orchard 1, I think we should do the same thing. What we need to do, what's the goal for V1, what's the goal for beta, and yeah. what, who is working on what right now, and who is responsible for which feature, uh, that would be nice. Um, so roadmap on Orchard 2, I had another thing, what was it, Orchard 2, yes, um, uh, um, mildly joking, should we call it Orchard Core? <laughs> um, As a reference, we have we have ASP.NET Core, we have Entity Framework Core, we have uh, ASP.NET MVC Core. That's cute, but no. Okay, no, just uh, yeah. You say no. We already have Orchard.Core, right? I no, no, yeah. well. oh, no, this one, this one we are removing, definitely. Yeah, Orchard.core is going. Yeah. So Orchard yeah, Core would be the one that doesn't have core. <laughs> yes. uh, no, no, this, so this is, a, so I, I created an issue for that because it's a pain, yes. Um, we need custom uh, module loaders for that because it's a folder which contains other folders. Well, it's an assembly which contains different modules. 
and usually what we have is one assembly, one module, multiple features, but one assembly, one module. So it's a pain to, to handle that differently, uh, and also in terms of references. So the suggestion is that orchard.core uh, becomes, uh, if orchard.title, orchard.dashboard, whatever module we have in the current, um, in V2, in the current module. So we create multiple modules. And if we want um, modules, uh, well, feature, whatever stuff that aggregates a list of things, we can always create a package called orchard.content management, for instance, which will reference uh, the title, the content management library, the content types, things like that. So if I meta package. Meta package. Um, to point them all for to, to reference one, but it will internally reference many of them. Okay, um, so let's write it down. Meta package. Um, yeah. So, but we the goal is to get rid of Orchard Core. It's, it's a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, Sebastian, have we got um have we got migrations working in yes. Orchard Two? Yes, in yes SQL. So in Orchard Two, well, yes SQL has the has some API. And yeah. the, the state is stored by Orchard. So yes, migration work. And take any module and you will find migrations. We've got, the, we got theming working, haven't we? So if someone yes. wanted to build a site, if someone wanted to build a site in Orchard 2, they probably could right now, as long yeah. as it was just simple. Yes, I, I created a blog. Yeah. So you can do blogs. You can create a simple site. Well, there you is can create content issue. items as well. Yeah, the, of well, the issue is the list module is uh, the view is uh, hardly is hard coded with blog post. I need to yeah. fix that. It's very easy. I need to oh, well. So the the it's just again a chain of dependency. I wanted to fix the orchard list module, which was referencing directly the blog post for list. And to do that, I wanted to add settings to the list content uh, part so that we can decide. Oh, it's a list of blog post. But to add settings, I need to make the editor, the content definition editor work. And when I, when I found some issues with that and the views, uh, I, I started working on making it using uh, user shapes instead. So now it's using, it's almost done, it works, I'm finalizing it. It's uh, using shapes to edit the settings of types and fields and everything. Um, so once I have it, I can, conf I can define a configuration for list and change the configuration to 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 not use blog post by default, um, yeah, and then yes, you can have a, you, you could create a blog post, but you will not have RSS, uh, meta web blog uh, API and things like that. So yeah, those things haven't been implemented. But yet. Okay. but theming works, even alternates on lists. Um, yeah, um, in in a driver. Uh, so yeah, you, it will work definitely. What about hosting? Like, can you host it on Azure yet or anything? I, I, it should work because uh, it works for Esprit Core and MVC, but I haven't tried. I have never tried it yet. Does it work through IIS at the moment? Do you know if Core I works? Through I haven't tried it. Okay. It should. Well, it runs using IIS Express. I think we made it work using IIS Express. IIS Express. Uh, it works on Linux. Yeah, because it does work on Linux. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the I want. I wonder if anyone's looked at the OSX um, story yet. For it. do you have a you have a blog post, uh, Sebastian, Lee, or a document to start with? The, so the readme is kind of uh, quite yeah. up to date. To start it even on Linux, uh, we have the the destruction to make make it work on Linux also. So it's pretty straightforward to start Ultra Two. Um, the readme is up to date, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, my, my personal goal is to reach a point where we can host a blog on Orchard with all the features working, which will be the proof of concept that all the infrastructure is there, theming, content management, everything. And we can start building modules based on that, like migrating the existing modules or building new ones. So, Have you seen, um, have you seen that Travis has gone green on our Orchard 2 build? I didn't see that. The Linux OSX platform for Travis has gone green. Okay, good. Yeah. Our Windows is still failing, but... Yeah, it, right. it must not run the test because the tests don't pass the thing. Yeah, that's true. Huh. Okay. So is this... It looks like there's a pretty good commit velocity on here. Yeah. Oh, yes. And lots of contributions. It's crazy. I'm, I, I would not expect as much contribution as good ones. Like what Chantry and Jasmine are doing, it's crazy. And so, as an anecdote, like 
two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was a new guy who created a PR on SQL to migrate from the NetRC1 to the NetRC2. Same thing on Orchard 2, something huge. It's crazy. And we didn't know the guy. He just, oh, let's. And now he's active and fixing everything when yeah. we have uh, project JSON issues. So that's great. And for, for your knowledge, Brett, um, so uh, Orchard 2 is faster without cache than Orchard 1 with cache. Really? Yes, it's That's without cache because I spent a lot of time. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that cache module. Yeah, but we uh, but we have a cache module too. Don't worry. But I'm just saying it's more than 400 requests per second on the blog page, meaning the blog itself and the posts on the home page. So wow, and that server. So that's server rendering a page. Yep, with it's database faster, access. It's yes. faster than IS serving up a pre-rendered. Hmm. Well, it's faster than ASP MVC in Orchard using the cache filter. Right. And the, and, the, and the cache module in Orchard 2 will, won't use an SPLint MVC filter. It will be an Orchard middleware, or MVC, um, SPLint middleware, which means it will be like thousands of requests per second. The only problems we've got at the moment are that um, you need to be running the latest .NET CLI, um, which is not the build that you take from the website, but the build you take from GitHub. Uh, uh, and right now I'm on uh, RC202424. That's probably old, huh? Yeah. Um, and si uh, well, Studio. well, since yesterday, it also so, it has also changed again. So, uh, if you pull now and you have a previous version, you will need to clean everything, uninstall all, uninstall all the CLI, and install the CLI called Preview One. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Since we yesterday. Probably update the docs and to reflect it will that. Be a, it will be a big issue because actually Preview One, the P is before the R, which means you get things. It's an it's older than RC2, but it's actually after, uh, sorry, it's older than RC1, but it's actually after RC1. So there will be an issue with that. You need to clean everything. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, good, good, good. Um, so, next question. We haven't got user management either, have we, right? What? We, there's no user management. No. No, okay, cool. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we probably reuse uh, identity, make some providers for identity. Maybe. Uh, okay, good. Uh, so, end of the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Uh, talk to you on Thursday for a triage. And now it's sure releasing uh, 1101. Uh, you can grab the packages which are already on GitHub release. I will uh, publish them officially on the websites. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you on Thursday. Bye, bye. See you. Bye, bye. bye guys. Bye, Aaron.